Well, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Dirt Road Outdoors TV. This week we're going to Wyoming chasing mule deer and antelope, but we're going to do it a little different this year. This year we're going to go 100% on public land, or we're going to knock on doors trying to get permission. So we're going to go out there on our own, see if we can't score on a couple big old bucks. This will be my first time out to Wyoming. I'm looking forward to it. I drew a mule deer tag and an antelope tag. Just gave Lena and Zeke a hug and kiss goodbye and I'm gonna go to the cemetery, say bye to Hunter and go get Irish in town. We're heading to Chatfield now. We're uh, picking up Irish and then we're off to Wyoming. Hopefully uh, we'll get a chance of seeing some mule deer and some antelope, seeing some new country. Well I just talked to Riker, he's all loaded up and heading for town. Well, we're all loaded up, we're going to stop at the gun range, and then we're off to Wyoming. Got everything all loaded up, and uh, we're going to do one quick pit stop and go to the range and shoot a few times. Being from Minnesota, you don't really shoot out past 150 yards, so we wanted to go and shoot a few times at 300 just to feel a little more comfortable. Both guns are shooting good, and they're right on and ready to go out and shoot some mule deer. You know, mule deer is probably one of my favorite animals to hunt, and I've shot a lot of big mule deer out in Wyoming, but, you know, every time I've went, I've always went on private property, you know, either had a guide or just had a trespass fee. You know, this year we're trying to do it just a little different. We're trying to do it like the average Joe. We're just going to go out there on our own, spend absolutely no money to see if we can't go out there and score a couple good bucks. We got out of Wyoming and got to the hotel, unload our stuff, and we're going to go out and scope for some deer. Well, we got all of our gear unloaded. We checked in the hotel room. Now we're waiting for one of my buddies, Josh Krimlich, to show up. He's got the moral off work, so he's going scouting tonight and going hunting with us tomorrow. Sir, come on in. How's it been? Good, yourself? Not too bad. Josh, nice to meet you. You know, I met Josh several years ago out here in Wyoming, and he was actually a ranch hand at the time on a ranch we were hunting on, and we ended up hitting it off, and we've kept in touch, and every year when I come to Wyoming, we go out for dinner and hang out a little bit, so this year Josh got a little extra time, so he's going with. He's been doing a little scouting for us. He works for the highway department now, so he's been watching for some big old bucks. He's got a few leads. It's a great big Oh section. yeah, oh, it is a great big one, yeah. Yeah, we barely made out of buffalo when we seen our first group of bucks. You know, there was one decent buck in that group, you know, probably not a first day shooter, but we're figuring since we're hunting on BLM land and state ground that you know, we're going to set our goal of anything over 150. We've seen a few mule deer and a lot of antelope, and hopefully the antelope stay in the same spot because they're in a spot that we can hunt them. You know, one thing about coming out here hunting on your own, you want to do as much research as possible. You know, you call up all your old buddies, see if any of them will give up a little bit of information, and you know, hopefully you can put it in your favor. You know, we end up seeing a bunch of antelope and a couple of decent bucks. Nothing too spectacular, but hey, tomorrow's a brand new day. Well, it's finally opening day out here in Wyoming. We're all excited. We're getting all of our gear together, getting ready to roll. Time for us to head down the truck and meet up with Josh. That's how my mama love her. All year, go hunting. I'm ready to rock and roll Wyoming. Take it up bright and early the next day, got our trucks loaded, and we had to go to the BLM office to get our permits. Well, Josh is down there ready to roll. We gotta hop in our truck, we gotta head to the BLM office and pick up our filming permits. You know, since we're hunting on BLM land out here, we actually have to have film permits. They treat us the same as Hollywood, so we have to pay so much per day to be out there hunting and filming. So we gotta make sure we're legal. We gotta go sign a few papers and we'll be ready to roll. Well, we started this process about a month ago. It takes about 30 days to get your film permits. Well, I've been talking back and forth with the office out here in Buffalo, and they said they'd have our permits ready to go first thing Monday morning, 
So let's go pick up our permits and get ready to go hunting. Finally got our permits. We are legal. Let's go kill some deer. Well, good morning. Getting out here right along the interstate. So wolf it in. We got permission to walk across the private to hunt some BLM land. So wish us luck. Well, our plan, we're going to start out, we're going to walk back in about five or six miles, try to get back away from the roads, try to get away from other hunters. We drew straws and Iris is up first for mule deer and I'm up first for antelope. You know, we were a little late to the show that first morning. The sun was already starting to come up, but our heads were still high. We had a lot of high hopes for today. Time to start walking, see what we can see. Well, we ended up coming through the first big coulee come up. I looked down and there was a pretty nice shed. Oh, there, pretty nice shed. Probably a two and a half, maybe three year old. He'd definitely be a shooter this year. It's even brown. Yeah. He had good fronts, good tops. Looking like something like that, four points, but a little bigger. Let's go again. Well, finally around eight o'clock, we got a glimpse of our first deer of the morning. A doe and two fawns, we just barely caught them going up over a ridge. Well, our plan for the rest of the morning is just go from draw to draw and just glass as much as we can and hopefully we can spot a big old buck. You know, as we're glassing, we're starting to pick out a few does and fawns here and a couple of does over there, still waiting to find that first buck. You know, we finally ended up spotting some bucks. There were three young bucks in one big old draw. We watched them feed up and head back into their bedding area. You know, nobody ever said it was gonna be easy. You know, we're gonna have to really work hard, but I know if we keep after it, we're gonna find some good bucks out here somewhere. By the time we got back to the truck at 11.30, we walked 14 miles, seen a bunch of does and a few small bucks. It's gonna be a lot more work than we thought. Well, after getting back to the truck, we were all pretty much wiped out. We'd walked 14.6 miles, really didn't see a whole lot. So we decided we we're gonna go get in that truck, cover a bunch of ground, go try to find some antelope, or maybe try to find a new spot to hunt this afternoon. You know, we ended up seeing a bunch of antelope, but every time we spotted them, they were always on private property. Well, finally we decided it's time to pull over, do some Wyoming tailgate. Time to get the old cooktop out, cook us some lunch right out here, and hopefully get right back after these antelope. You know, we got a belly full of food. We hopped back in the truck, went driving around, and we spotted a bunch more antelope. But it seemed like every time we spotted them, they were still on private property. So guess what? Time to start knocking on some doors. The worst thing to do is tell us no. Or at least they can do is tell Riker now. Well, it's not part of it, but it's one of those that you can come. Who owns this part? The same people? Same guy. Oh. Oh no, bad. White. White Clyde. You guys, he's rutting. Let's see one. Well, we ended up spotting this really wide buck out in this pasture, and there's a house not too far away. So we decided to pull in. Riker's gonna go knock on the door, see if we can't get permission. No one down there? Uh. Yeah, one of them. Here, go talk to one of them. Well, sure enough, they gave Riker permission. Now we just gotta figure out where our best spot is for us to sneak up and try to get a shot. He said, he said that wide one hasn't been on his property all year. Really? He's like, since there's been so many people driving and blasting them, he jumped the fence today. Just started, just got on there. Well, we look over the ground, and there's a small little hill. We think we can sneak up there, get within about 320 yards. Well, the guys are able to sneak right up to the edge of this pasture. Now it's just a waiting game. This buck's out there chasing those. Just need him to wait for him to stop and turn broadside. This buck we're going after is really unique. His horns go straight out. It's like 16 inches wide and something different. So I like it. Ended up dumping them right in his tracks. It's 
pretty exciting. It was the first antelope I ever shot. And after a hard morning of walking, it was, it was sure nice. And I can't wait to get up and see this antelope. Good job, buddy. First day out here in Wyoming. And this morning we decided to just hunt mule deer and concentrate on them. And we've seen a lot of does and a few small bucks. But this afternoon we were going to go after some antelope, try to get something on the ground and get it done. And we've seen a lot of antelope, a lot of bucks, a lot of does. And there's something about this one. He was wide. I liked him. So we went after him and got it done. Well, the ice is broken in Wyoming. We were off and running. Riker made a great shot on that antelope. Now we just got to hope we can find some deer. Well, we ended up taking Riker's antelope to a local taxidermist. And as we were dropping him off to get caped, he gave us a little inside information of a spot where there might be a couple good bucks hanging out, so I guess we know where we're going scouting tonight at. Well, after we dropped the antelope off at the tax terminus, we didn't have enough time to walk back anywhere, so we decided to go for a drive. Ended up seeing a few mule deer and one pretty decent whitetail buck. Well, right towards last light, we seen what we wanted to see. We seen a couple shooter bucks coming off a piece of BLM land, so we got a game plan for tomorrow. Only one problem, it's going to be a seven mile walk to get back to where we just seen them deer jump the fence. We're out here, we're going to be spraying down with lethal to cover our scent. It's going to be a warm one today, so we got to make sure we keep covering our scent up. Hunting the Powder River breaks here in Wyoming. Riker laid the smack down on a 16 and a half inch wide antelope yesterday. Going after a couple big old bucks this morning, so. We're on public land, so do it yourself hunt, and there's people everywhere, so we're gonna have to go so somebody doesn't cut us off. Want you guys throw that bad boy in your backpack? Yep. Well, we probably walked for an hour in the dark, finally got to the big draw where we thought there might be some deer in. We peek over the hill just as it was starting to break light, and sure enough, there's a big bachelor group of bucks. You know, we're kind of going into panic mode, they're 580 yards away, and we know there's no way for us to get closer this way, so we need to back up try to circle around this group of bucks. Well, it probably takes us 20 minutes to back up, come around, we come up and look and we spot the three smaller bucks. The two bigger bucks are missing. There's one draw straight ahead of us, so they gotta be in there. Well, sure enough, we peek up there and there they are. And you know, we're kinda caught in the wide open, so we have George stay back with one camera, me and Riker start the belly crawl. We're gonna try to sneak up and get in position to make a shot. I crawl into position, I get to crosshairs on the buck, and it feels like it's taking forever for Riker to get the camera on the deer. So we spotted the bucks, and it was like panic mode. Had to get the camera on them, the gun on them, and we're in the wide open, so it was, it was go time. Well, I end up dumping that buck right in his tracks. The other buck goes up 30 yards, stops, looks broadside. So now we're thinking, hey, let's switch, see if we can't get a double. And the buck ends up taking off before Riker can get a shot. Well, I didn't get much time to celebrate dropping my buck. We know he's laying dead right over there, and the other one's got to be right over here in this big draw, so we're going to run over there and see if Riker can't get a shot. Well, as soon as we get there, we spot a doe and a fawn. We're looking, we're looking, all of a sudden, boom, we spot him on the other hill about 375 yards away. So here we go. Gonna try this again to see if we can't get a double. <laughs> Are 
and the fun ends and the work begins. We got two bucks down in Wyoming. 375. <laughs> <laughs> All that work. <laughs> All right, we got two public land bucks down. Let's go put our hands on some horns. Well, here he is, my second morning public land buck here in Wyoming. You know, we came out here, me and Riker did, on a, on a do-it-yourself hunt. You know, we had to go through the BLM office, get filming permits, and uh, you know, yesterday morning we walked 11.2 miles, never seen a shooter, so we were getting a little nervous. Luckily, Riker broke the ice last night, killed a beautiful goat, 16 and a half inches wide, and we actually talked to the taxidermist in town. And he kind of gave us a little inside uh, tip on a spot where there was pretty some pretty good bucks, and he, he, he was definitely right. We come back in here this morning, and uh, we walked a mile, got set up back here, and spotted this buck along with another one. We were able to slide into about 260 yards, dump this one in his tracks, and as we snuck up here, we spotted another buck. And Riker was able to get the old daily double on him, so we got uh, we got another buck to go look at. It looks like we'll spend the rest of the day packing these animals out of here. Well, you hurry up and tagged my deer, drug him off in the shade, gutted him. Now it's time to go look at Riker's buck. <clears throat> so we just got Jason's buck gutted, put down in the shade. We're going to go across the ridge and go find mine. It's funny how a guy's luck can change so quick that we went from not seeing none to tagged out. First things we've seen is two shooters. There he is. Let's go look at him. All right. Second day in Wyoming. Uh, yesterday we put on a lot of miles. We were a little discouraged at the end of the day. We got a little insight on where to go and we packed in a little earlier this morning and we got just over a mile back here and we spotted two, two good bucks and we got set up and Jason made a heck of a shot on his and we got up and looked at his and mine was across the ridge, a little over 300 yards and we were able to set up and be able to poke at him and we got him. Fun ends, work begins. Well, as Riker punched his tag, I don't think either one of us knew how much work we were in for the next couple hours. You know, the GPS might say it's only a mile the way crow flies, but with all the ups and downs, the hills, the valleys, it's about a two and a half mile walk, so we're in for a lot of work. Well, by the time we got both bucks deboned, packed up, and back to the pickup, it took us about four and a half hours. You know, definitely a lot of work. Definitely want to tip our hats to the guys that do this year in and year out. Do-it-yourself hunts can be a lot of work, but also really rewarding.